Welcome to our SolidWorks Essentials course. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you around the SolidWorks 2012 interface. We'll begin by creating a new SolidWorks part document. Click New. The three options on the new SolidWorks document window let us create a SolidWorks part document, an assembly document, or a drawing document. Let's click the Advanced button. Here we can choose from default templates or any customized templates we've created. Let's return to the Novice window, select Part, and click OK. And here is our new part document. This white space that takes up most of the screen is called the graphic area. That's where most of the action happens in SolidWorks. Here's where you work with models, assemblies, and drawing documents. Now let's take a look at the icons on the left side of the screen right under the ribbon. The first tab has a little gear on it, and this shows us the feature manager where we see the very useful design tree. Next is the property manager. The Configuration Manager. The Dim Expert Manager is next. And finally, the Display Manager. SolidWorks uses a ribbon-based command manager pretty much standard in current Windows applications today. We're on the Features tab of the ribbon, and the only two commands currently available are the Extruded Boss Base and the Revolved Boss Base commands. The reason for this is that these two features are sketch-based, and we can create a sketch right from their property managers to use as a source for the part. We're going to learn more about these commands soon. The available tools on any tab of the ribbon depend upon which environment you happen to be in. To show and hide ribbon tabs, just right-click on any tab and select from the list of available tabs. Any tab that's currently visible is marked with a check mark. When I mouse over a tool and stay there for a couple seconds, a callout appears explaining what the tool does. To customize the Command Manager, you can right-click on the ribbon and scroll to Customize Command Manager. This window's got a lot of tabs, which indicates just how much you can customize your ribbon. Check here to enable or disable the Command Manager. Check here to show large buttons with text. Under Options, we can show large icons as well as tooltips. If we right click on any tool, we've got a few more options for how the tools display. Let's, let's remove the text from the revolved base and let's restore it. We can show the text below. Other options are to begin a group and delete the tool. Let's go back to the Customize window, click on the Commands tab. The commands are grouped by the categories you see in the column on the left-hand side. Grab any tool button on the right side and just drag it right up to the ribbon and drop it there. To remove a tool, just grab it and drag it back. We also have the option to create an empty tab, and you can populate that with any tools you like. To the far right of all the tabs is the New Tab button. Just left-click on that, select Empty Tab. If I right-click on this button, I get a few more options which extend beyond my recording screen here. Add tab, remove tab, copy to assembly, copy to drawing. I'm going to select empty tab. Now I'm going to grab and drop tools right on it. If I need to remove a tab, just right-click on it and select delete. OK, let's take a look at the Menus tab in the Customize window. From here, we can customize the standard Windows menu. Now let's take a look at the Keyboard tab. Here's where we can create customized keyboard shortcuts. Let's delete the Close shortcut, for example. While I'm still in this cell, let's key in a shortcut. Let's say Control-W we will just restore that common shortcut. And here it is. Next is the Mouse Gestures tab. Let me just cancel out of the Customize window for a moment so I can show you what mouse gestures are all about. When I press and hold down the right mouse button in the graphic area and then I move the mouse a bit, eight tools appear on a wheel. I activate a tool by mousing over its position on the wheel. And now I've activated the Zoom tool. Let's deactivate it by clicking on its icon in the hang-up bar. The available mouse gestures depend upon which environment you're in. Let me show you what I mean. Let's create a sketch. Drop a circle on the front plane. 
And once again, I'm going to right-click and hold the right mouse button down. The mouse gestures wheel opens, but with a different set of tools. The tool set to default for the sketch environment. The rectangle tool is now active. OK, let's hold down a right-click again, and let's activate the circle tool now. And now the circle tool is active. I'm going to click Accept to exit the tool, and then let's Cancel to exit my sketch. Yes, I'll discard the changes and exit. Another way to launch the Customize dialog window is from this menu here. Just scroll down and select Customize. Let's go back to the Mouse Gestures tab. Here's where we set the various commands for the gestures. Check here to enable or disable the mouse gestures. You can choose a 4 gesture wheel or an 8 gesture wheel. And let's scroll down this list of categories and commands. Here are some assigned gestures for the sketch environment. The Sketch Fillet command is down and right. And if you like, you can select a different gesture from this drop down menu. Instead of assigning the fillet to this gesture, we can choose to assign a different tool to this gesture, let's say the chamfer. Let's scroll down a little more. Here are the assigned mouse gestures for the part and assembly environments. SolidWorks also lets you easily sort the assigned gestures by Part, Assembly, Drawing, and Sketch categories. Just click on the column title. We can sort from the Category drop-down menu at the top of the window. Or we can check here to show only commands with mouse gestures assigned. The next tab takes us to the Options window. The areas are Shortcut Customization, Menu Customization, and Workflow Customization. And let's cancel out of the Customize dialog window. Let's take a look at the strip that's at the top of the screen. It's called the Standard Toolbar. It contains tools that you use pretty frequently. And if you don't know what the tool is, just mouse over until the tooltip appears. New, Open, Save, and so on. To use the Standard Windows menu, mouse over this triangle next to the software name here. To pin down this menu strip, click on the pin icon. Click the pin again so that it collapses automatically. To the right of the standard toolbar, we've got the search fields, and here we can search SolidWorks Help, the Knowledge Base, the Community Forum, Commands, and Files and Models. Next, let's explore docking and undocking options in SolidWorks. I'm going to grab the Property Manager. And as you see, I've got four available places to dock it. But if I like, I'm able to let it float by dropping it randomly in the graphic area. Let's redock it at the top left. We can also undock the Command Manager. We've got three available positions for the Command Manager to dock. And let's restore it to the top now. Now let's take a look at the SolidWorks Task Pane, which is currently collapsed on the right-hand side of the screen. We click this house icon to open it, and then click the pin icon to pin it down. The Task Pane is currently docked on the right-hand side of the screen but we are able to drag it and drop it in available space so that it becomes a freely floating palette. The first tab is SolidWorks Resources. This is where we access SolidWorks Resources and the online community. Next is the Design Library. Here's where we store reusable parts like nuts and bolts and screws. The 3D Content Center lets you share resources with SolidWorks users around the globe. SolidWorks also provides you with a lot of their own content in reusable parts. Let's take a look at the next tab. It's the File Explorer, and it works just like Windows Explorer does. This lets you navigate through your SolidWorks parts. Next tab is the View Palette. We'll be reviewing this palette in greater detail in the Drawing section of this course. Next tab is Appearances, Scenes, and Decals. And here we can access a variety of custom scenes and appearances. SolidWorks comes with a huge variety of preset appearances, materials, scenes, decals, etc. The next tab takes us to Custom Properties, and we're going to be exploring this later on as well. Before I close the task pane, I'm going to show you how the search function works in SolidWorks. Here's the search bar at the top of the screen. 
Let's scroll down and select Files and Models. And now I'm going to type in text as my search term. Press Enter or click Search. And SolidWorks processes our request. And here in the task pane is the list of available files that match my request. You'll see that the Search tab now appears in the task pane. To dock the task pane, just click here. And to minimize it, click anywhere in the graphic area. Now let's take a look at the bottom of the SolidWorks screen. This is what's called the status bar, and this shows which version of SolidWorks I'm using. Here you see the current mode we're in, currently editing part. When I create a sketch, for example, it'll change modes. Let's do that just so I can show you. Create a sketch on the front plane. Now you can see that we're in editing sketch mode. This line will always display your current mode. Let's exit the sketch. New to the status bar in SOLIDWORKS 2012 is the option to select units of measurement right from the status bar. You can still change the units from the options window. Let's just open that so I can show you where. Options. Here we've got two tabs, System Options and Document Properties. Let's go to Document Properties. Scroll down to the Units branch. Currently we've got millimeters, grams, and seconds selected as our default units of measurement in our documents. I'll be talking about both these tabs in greater details just in a little bit. Back to the status bar. We've got a Help icon next. We launch Help by clicking on it, and we close the Help pop-up by clicking the question mark icon again. Just a couple more things I wanted to talk about regarding the SOLIDWORKS interface. F11 is your shortcut key for toggling on and off full screen mode. Full screen mode gives you more workroom. The same option is also available under the View menu. Select View from the main menu strip and scroll down to Full Screen. Another way to maximize your workspace is by going to the ribbon and unselecting Use Large Buttons with Text. Right-clicking anywhere in the graphic area gives you a contextual menu, which of course varies depending upon your current environment. Right now we see Zoom and Pan tools, as well as recently used commands. If you press S on your keyboard, you're going to see a custom menu. And this concludes our review of the SOLIDWORKS 2012 interface. In our next tutorial, I'm going to be creating our first sketch in SOLIDWORKS 2012.